This programme consists of a series of short video clips aimed at Year 3 to 6 pupils. Each lesson starter is a self-contained item which can be used to inspire a range of creative writing activities. There are six in total, all on the theme of fire. This is going to happen very quickly. Glass is a wonderful material. I love working with it. It's very immediate. There's the fire and the flame and the magic of all of that. In order to turn sand, which is the basic material of glass, into glass, you need a lot of heat, a lot of flame, and a lot of fire, which reaches a high enough temperature so that the sand actually melts. We go inside the furnace with large irons, called blowing irons. The irons are hollow down the center. The furnace is about 1130 degrees centigrade, and we scoop out, we gather out the molten glass. It's like treacle. The way in which I introduce color, I take the glass which is on the end of the blowing iron and I dip it into grains of broken glass and that coats the surface. The art of glass making has not changed since Roman times. The benches that we use to sit on to do the forming and shaping, the jacks, or the uh, pincers are almost exactly the same tools that were used 2,000 years ago. We have another chamber called a glory hole. Now the glory hole sits at about 1280 to 1300 degrees and that's the chamber where we reheat the glass as we're working it to re-soften it and th that's why that temperature is so much higher. The most important process in making a plate is the spinning at the end. You've shaped it as you would a bowl. The very last moment, the spinning creates centrifugal force and pulls the edge of the bowl right out and flattens it. The word poi is originally a Maori word, and poi literally translated just means ball. What I need to do before I start using my fire poi, which are made of a Kevlar wick, is that I need to soak them in paraffin. Um, so I open my paraffin, which is highly flammable. At this point, I have to be very careful not to get paraffin onto me, because if I'm going to be using flaming fire poi, and I've got paraffin on me, then that's really quite dangerous. So, once I've got paraffin in my container, I just get my fire poi, and I put them into the paraffin. Once I've put the poi in the paraffin, I'm going to leave them to soak on that side for a minute or two, and then I'm just going to turn them around so that they're soaked equally all the way through, and then I'm ready to go. The first trick I learned with poi is called a weave, which is the basic trick in poi. And then most of the other things I taught myself just by playing around with them or by watching people and learning off them. 
but really what it consists of is just getting used to where they can swing and where they won't hit you and what planes they can swing in. And once you know that, you can pretty much make it up yourself. A huge fire at a derelict warehouse on the Olympic site in East London. I'm standing on the roof of a block of flats around 200 yards from the fire. I'm at least 100 feet in the air and yet the smoke is climbing hundreds and hundreds of feet above me. There's flames within the smoke shooting up in the air. Across the whole side there is a blaze and then the smoke is just drifting all the way over towards Stratford. The whole area seemed to be completely covered in smoke. When volcanoes erupt without warning, fire and molten lava pour out, threatening everything around them. Every year, hundreds of lives are lost and homes destroyed when ferocious fires spread through the Australian bush. We are going to basically show what we're going to do with the fire that helps us to make this lovely pizza. We're using the wood from London and uh, oak. This is oak. And that is the best we can find in this country anyway. It gives a lovely taste flavor to the pizza and the bread. The reason we're using the wood burning oven is because the, you can get, with bread, the best taste of it, and with pizza as well. The whole oven is built with the terracotta stones, so it's a very powerful stone, which you can resist on the, on the you know, very high temperature. And everything is on terracotta, the base and the whole dome. The dome is a very low dome, that helps to make a very good cook on the pizza. <clears throat> you don't need to put too much cheese on these pizzas because if you put too much ingredient on this dough, the dough is so light and soft that you will not hold all these ingredients. You can look how quick the pizza will be cooked. Touch, yeah? The pizza is ready. That's how quick it takes to cook a pizza. Difference of other pizza, and I'll show you the difference. And the reason why you can't put too much ingredient in this pizza. This is the lightest pizza with the no ingredient on top. Look what happens if I lift the pizza like this. Everything will fall down. So you can eat this pizza like you normally eat all pizza in London. What you do with this pizza, the only way, I mean, there is a different way, but one of the common easy way is just Four part, cut it, roll it, and then eat it like this. Mm, delicious.
Yes. Yes, 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 yes. The coals I was walking on were actually at a temperature of several hundred degrees Celsius. However, I didn't get burnt. In fact, I didn't feel any pain at all because I was walking so quickly that there was hardly any time for any amount of heat to transfer from the coals to my feet. It's actually slightly misleading to call it fire walking because you're not walking on flames, you're walking on these coals. And yes, they are very hot, but they're covered in a fine layer of ash which acts as an insulating layer and protects your feet from the heat. Fire walking's been around in different cultures for hundreds if not thousands of years and it's often used as a ritual to test people's faith. And in a way I guess I was putting my faith in science. Science passed the test. Now this was something I did as a scientist and in very carefully controlled conditions. So I wouldn't recommend you try and do it yourself.